thanks very much to the possibility to talk about our project here. My name is Thomas de los Santos. I'm the CEO of Innovative Mobility. Uh, we are located in Jena in uh, Germany. And uh, my main idea behind our business is um, economy is essential, electric mobility is secondary. Um, why is this important? Because if, if you mention electric mobility today, everybody's like, uh, okay, um, it's not ne never going to happen, but the point is not electric mobility, the point is economy. And why is that? I will explain to you right now. So I hope um, it's possible for you to see the, the current design of the, uh, the production-ready design of our vehicle. And our business concept is to reduce it to the max, which means have a single-seated LEV, um, have best suitability for daily use through closed vehicle, and um, also have safety and efficiency as main aspects, so the consumer can save up to 3,000 euros per year. Uh, you can put in a relative figure and say, without any subsidies, you can reach 40% cost um, reduction compared to a regular ICE microcar. So that's the business case behind it. So that's why I put the cost first, because it's the most important topic. So if you look here at the depreciation running costs and maybe even congestion charge, which is something that may be volatile, um, you can see that our electric car, light electric vehicle, um, will save up costs without any subsidies of about, well, 1,200 euros per year in a regular case of, let's say, 15,000 kilometers, which is very common with business applications. Um, the price will start from 8,900 euros but plus a battery lease model which is 55 euros per month. Um, so what we reach is the 40% cost reduction and CO2 emission reduction by 75%, which is a side effect actually, because having it with an electric motor is not a necessity um, because we want to have it electric, but it's a necessity because the business case, the concept of the vehicle will only work out with electric, uh, with electric mobility. So, who are the customers for this kind of vehicle? Of course, everyone, right? We had before, uh, we had heard of figures saying that 85% uh, of the uh, commutes are less than uh, 80 kilometers. Um, there's different kind of figures in the market, but it all doesn't matter if the perception of the people is, oh, I need uh, one device for everything. So, what we do here is we don't, um, we don't replace cars as replacing a car itself, but we chop up the car and say, okay, what is the most effective device, let's call it device, mobility device, for fulfilling a certain customer need? Because what we put in first is the customer need. The customer need is not to have four people running around in a car. The customer need is in 85% to get from one place to another and have an average daily commute of 44 kilometers. I have to be careful here, not falling over. Um, so what are we targeting first? Um, since we uh, are a small company, we have to focus on certain customers, which are, for example, mobility providers. We have heard some uh, people talking about it. You can integrate our vehicle into a fleet without any technical changes. So we already have, um, we already have the connectivity. We already have... Um, a tablet computer inside, so all you have to do is like maybe put on some piece of software so you could easily integrate it in, in, in any uh, fleet system that you can imagine. If it is car sharing, company fleets, or even commuters making their cars available to other users, as we heard it today as well, it's no problem, we don't have to change anything. And of course we have early adopters who are always willing to buy a new piece of technology. So what are we actually doing? What's the car? Um, what are the features of the car? So if you look at efficiency and we compare ourselves like, let's say, to a premium electric car, which is for us a um, smart electric drive from Daimler, which weighs in about 1,000 kilogram, we have 340 kilograms. If you look at acceleration, very important, we have 9 seconds from 0 to 100 and 13 seconds with the smart, which is, you might say, uh, it's not necessary, it's a commuting vehicle, but actually, guys, if you want to sit into a, in a car and 
you're not, you're like the slowest, you don't want to have it. You don't want to be that uncool guy that is in a like tiny little thing that is not providing any fun. So fun is a very important factor. And uh, I also heard it from Fabienne. Uh, I don't know where she is right now, but there. Okay, sorry. Um, that fun is also an essential value that we want to that we want to have. We don't want to lose it. We want to have fun. That's why performance is an integral key. But if we look at the consumption, the energy consumption, you will see that maybe 5.2 kilowatt hours on a standard and um, NF. Um, NFC cycle um, is pretty low compared to the the one of the Daimler Smart, and which will also translate into very low or very short charging time, which is if you take the same distance with a regular car, let's say 100 kilometers range, um, and we consume one third less of the energy, we need one. Th uh, two-thirds less of the energy, you need two-thirds less of the battery capacity, you need two-thirds less of the charging time, you need two-thirds less of the battery price. So it all translates into the business model if you reduce, reduce it to the max, meaning having, and that's the next point, um, having a vehicle that fulfills all needs and is still efficient and cost-effective. So if we compare ourselves to the Renault Tweezy, which may be a vehicle that you already know, that is right now in the market, uh, we see that this is um, limited weather protection. It is already little fun to drive, not too much fun, but little fun to drive. Um, but the biggest problem is you have no trunk that you can lock. Uh, you, you only have um, very limited uh, weather protection. You cannot use it all year long. Whereas we have full, fully closing um, vehicle which with wing doors have a very good driving performance and we really focused in the design of the car on the ergonomics which means easy entry very spacious seating um, so we can fit people in that are up to 1 meter 98 try to fit that in in a regular micro car the only thing actually competing in that is the smart because it reduces to two seats so um, we have a lighting a lifting mechanism but that's all just things that add up to the usability for daily use or the suitability for daily use. You need a trunk. You want to go grocery shopping every day. You don't want to go to, let's say, IKEA uh, with this vehicle. No, but you want to go to the supermarket. You want to buy um, a crate. You have a shopping bag. You may go to the um, train station and so on. So this is really covered with this vehicle. And uh, one very important topic for Germany and other countries as well um, is crash performance. We don't want to sit in a little um, plastic bag that if it runs against a wall will fold up like wet paper. Um, so we are the first one who will pass the NCAP crash test uh, in, th in this class L7E. Um, if you compare this to a scooter with roof or without, you clearly see that there is a incremental change in the safety concept here, which cannot yet be solved by sensors, because there will be always guys driving out there. So if you just make everything autonomous, you will still need, for a very long time in the future, you will need um, uh, combust uh, zones, crushing zones um, that will give um, crash test performance. So I want to talk about a bit of, uh, about the um, organizational structure as well. We are uh, the leader of industrial consortium. We received some governmental funds. Um, we're going to exhibit our first fully functional, fully running prototype in Geneva next year in March. Um, we have a consortium of partially automotive um, partners, partially partners from other industries, but they're all partners who have long-term experience in what they are doing. And we are just actually coordinating all of these activities and bring them along with our business concept so that we have the cost efficiency and also, in the end, um, the advancement that we need in order to have the 40% cost effectiveness or cost savings. Um, our investors are currently the BMT in Thuringen and uh, the Bamboo Ventures uh, from Munich. And we are currently preparing for the next financing round to go into series development and series production. So if you look at the time plan, that's what it looks like right now. We have the market entry in 2015 planned. 
We may take pre-orders in 2014, but as you see, it's a little time into the future. So right now, we are looking for the next round financing, and now I'm available for questions. Uh, thanks a lot. So, questions for Thomas? Um, and I'd like to ask you, actually, because the uh, success of a car model is very much uh, based on the brand power and the brand recognition. So, do you have evidence coming from like um, consumer research uh, showing that people will be willing to buy cars based on the technical, uh, let's say, functionalities rather than on uh, yeah the brand and uh, yeah the status symbol they represent? And if yes, what is your uh, targeted customer, what, what does it look like in terms of age, um, <coughs> revenues, etc.? Yes, very good question, thank you. Um, of course, we all know it's very difficult, especially in Germany, to get people, like, get, it, get them out of their Audi A8 into a one-seater car from a no-one. Um, this, is, this, is, this is absolutely a clear fact, but that's why we are looking in the first place in business customers, because business customers, you can think of delivery services in town, you can think of um, pizza delivery, you can think of um, nursery services or household services of any kind. Um, they are all looking at profitability. And if you give them a device into hand that helps them reduce their cost, it will increase their, um, their, their margin or they can enter the market and increase their business, and for them, mobility is very crucial, and for them, mobility costs are even more crucial. So we start with B2B customers that have a clear focus on the cost. Nevertheless, nevertheless, the biggest market, of course, is the commuters. But in which way they use it, if as a car-sharing car or as a privately owned, actually, we don't, we don't care, you know, but... Um, if you want to test the car and if you want to convince yourself that this is a vehicle that you want to use or a device that you want to use, just use it, try it out, and if you don't like it, don't use it. So we don't want anyone to use this just, be, just because uh, somebody else is using it. So I want you to sit in the car, drive it, and if you tell me later, oh, it's boring or I don't like it, then don't drive it ever again. Because I'm convinced it is really fun to drive it, it is really comfortable, it gives you a lot of space, it gives you all the connection you need, and it gives you a cost advantage. So if this is not sufficient for you, then don't use the car. Uh, very interesting approach. I'm just curious, what is the range that you expect? Because you said you only consume five kilowatts per hour, like five kilowatt hours around about, and yeah. um, do you have a heating system? And how does it affect range? We have a heating system. Um, it is very important that you have a heating system. Nobody will use a car if it has no heating system. If you talk about the whole year usage, that is very important for us. We have a range of um, NEFZ range of uh, 120 kilometers, which will turn out into, I guess, between 90 and 110 kilometers in real usage. And if you talk about winter, you're going to end up with maybe 80 kilometers or 75 kilometers. So what we are saying, what we are telling our clients is until 75 kilometers per day or per driving interval, because you also charge it in between, but for example, a pizza delivery service, they want to know how many kilometers can I go. They have a fixed amount of kilometers that they need, and I will tell them I guarantee 75 kilometers in any condition, and uh, if not, you can give the car back to me, because um, that's very important that you can really guarantee a range. Let's put it like this. So 70, 75 kilometers under any condition and 90 to 110 under regular normal condition with the functionality of preheating, with all the functionality, smart functionalities that is NFC opening. Um, you can put on your app if you want it on the car. So um, also, if I look at Ubertricity with the charging and the smart metering, we can also provide the infrastructure may need it in the car. I don't know the details yet, but if anything you want to do, you can already have it in the car. So this is provided. Mm -hmm.